Come on in. Hello. Hello, hello. We're glad you're here. I am so glad that you're here. That is needing to get turned off. I know. Oh, good point. I'm going to make sure mine is turned off. Done. Done. <laughs> we are done. Um, so close to being done. Okay, we're just, we have like, okay, we're actually right on time right now if we start right now, which we will. Okay. Perfect. Hi, everybody. I'm Siobhan Sarna, and I am thrilled to have you with us. This is Dr. Christine Schaffner, who has the word Julia in her name, and it's just because that's one of her assistants who helped get it set up, so don't be confused. And, um, you know, recently, the way we probably know each other is that the Lymphatic Rescue Summit just wrapped up, and we had about 100,000 people come. This was dedicated to all of you and inspired by my mother, Annetta Marie Brown Sarna who in the 90s had lymphoma, lymphoma, and we were incredibly confused about the condition, had no idea what was going on. It was primitive. It was brutal. No internet. And it was, I was her caregiver for 10 years. I don't wish it upon anybody, any part of it. Um, so there you go. She's my um, sort of that was part of the reason. Now, obviously, I teach people about gut health and connect them with experts with SIBO SOS and Healing SIBO, the book, and uh, IBS information and the documentaries and summits that I've done on gut health. And that is continuing for sure. The name of my company is Chronic Condition Rescue because there was so much stuff wrong with me. <laughs> and I started with the SIBO and the IBS, and then I've moved into the lymphatics. And with the help of people like the incredible Dr. Christine Schaffner, and I am also going to be doing a summit on biological dentistry, and it's called the Dental Health Connection Summit. That is coming up September 2021, where Dr. Schaffner has also contributed and connected me with a lot of experts. So I wanted to just let you know a little bit of context about how this has all happened. And then... The response to the lymphatic summit, I have to say, was ex it really exceeded my expectation. Kind of surprised, kind of not surprised, because the information isn't out there, and it's surprising that it still isn't out there, and that's upsetting to me. So I knew that I had to have um, a continuation, which is why, from Yao to everyone, I think you're muted, Siobhan. Am I muted? I don't think I'm muted. I can hear you just fine. Okay, great. Yeah, I appreciate that because I have done webinars 10, 15 minutes in and I was muted the whole time and people were just watching me lip reading. So um, <laughs> keep me posted if we're having a problem with the audio. Uh, you can go into the chat. Clarissa is behind the scenes there and is going to be helping you with technical issues. Okay, thanks, Suli. Um, if you want, while we're just doing the intro here, and we are going to start in about one minute, uh, go ahead and tell us where you're from. We had a lot of people from the Netherlands and Poland and um, all over the world, South Africa, um, the last time we did this. So the last time we did it, 9,000 people registered. Wow. We didn't realize that for some reason. Don't ask. <laughs> well, our limit on the Zoom room was 500 people. Therefore, not everyone got in, and I felt really bad about it. So therefore, I decided to ask Dr. Schaffner if she would be so kind as to do another one live. Mm -hmm. And we will be providing you all with the recording if you have to leave or if you feel like, wow, that was a lot of information. I need to watch that again. And we will be providing you with the transcript as a gift for attending. Give us a little time about the transcript. It will not be instant because we use real people to transcribe. And know that the recording will get it to you ASAP. So give us a couple of days, but know that we will. Okay, there is a course that we're going to be talking to you about. You don't need to do it. This isn't a pitch to the course per se. It's not a tele telemedicine, uh, tele, tele, oh, tele summit. Tele tele it's not, it's not a, what is it? An infomercial. That's right. It's not an infomercial, <laughs> but we have a special price on a super special course that Dr. Schaffner created that I bought with my own hard earned money last year. When I was doing, even prior to finishing the summit, I was like, Dr. Schaffner, can I help? Can, can, can I? help you help more people by giving everyone a better price on this incredible course. She said, yes, let's get to the material. I will take you inside the course periodically so you can see it. But again, you don't have to do it. I'm just telling you it's an opportunity. Dr. Schaffner, who are you? Christine Schaffner <laughs> is a revolutionary in the world of medicine. She has helped so many other practitioners revolutionize their practices and help their patients. 
she has done her own summits, multiple summits, and helping people understand energetic medicine and biological medicine and all these terms that you're hearing bantered about. She has created her own center. It is Eminence Health. It is in Seattle, Washington, and you can do telemedicine with her or someone on her team. She is one of my personal doctors. I am currently out of cavitation surgery and working with her on my Lyme. So obviously I'm a big fan. Mm-hmm. Here you are, Dr. Schaffner. Thank you. Get us going and help us learn these three action steps we can take for helping our own lymphatic system. Oh, well, I can't thank you enough for your kind words and the opportunity. And I'm just so excited that you um, took your passion to the lymphatic system because like you've seen, you know, this is such a still an overlooked system and it's so rewarding to treat. And again, we'll go through a lot of education today and we can talk about the course if you want to dive deeper, but um, I've been practicing 11 years now, which is um, hard to believe. So it's a short amount of time, but a long amount of time. And I've seen a lot of patients and this is one of the foundational systems that I feel is really rewarding to treat. And I empower my patients with a lot of lymphatic tools um, to really whatever, Um, condition we're navigating, this is really, really important to have um, the lymphatic system is important to have flowing with whatever protocol we embark on. So we're going to dive in and I'm going to share my screen. And here we go. I'm one of those people who has a lot going on on my computer. (laughs) Um, Okay. So What we're going to cover today is I'll just go uh, again an overview around the lymphatic system. If you've watched uh, Siobhan's Lymphatic Rescue Summit, you know a lot, but I again want to just make sure everyone has a a basic knowledge as we go in deeper. And we're going to talk again about three action steps. Um, They're jam packed, three slides of more than probably one action, more than three action steps, but we want to give you tools that you can start right away um, within your own life. And then I created this seven day lymphatic rehab blueprint for Siobhan's community, knowing that people were gonna be coming out of the lymphatic rescue summit. I had already done some version of this um, for my own community, because again, this is something that I just wanna get the word out, whether you're gonna become a patient of myself and the clinic, go to another functional medicine doctor or naturopathic doctor or biologically trained doctor, or just really wanna empower yourself that you can prevent any chronic illness from happening down the road. These are really the foundational tools that I feel are important for everyone to know. And then because of my journey with the lymphatic system, I really am passionate about the glymphatic system. And this is the lymphatic system um, in the brain that only really is most active at night. So we're gonna tune into the glymphatic system and how we really need deep sleep and REM sleep to have an activated glymphatic system. So I've been uh, learning more, not only about glymphatics, but also the role of what types of sleep are the most important um, to have a healthy brain and a healthy body and a healthy lymphatic system. And out of that knowledge, I partnered with a dear friend and colleague, Dr. Marco Ruggiero, who actually helped us create a flow cream that is a really wonderful lymphatic cream, but he helped me create a sleep cream um, that we're going to talk about. And then when we talk about the glymphatic system, we have to acknowledge the downstream lymph in the lymphatic system in the cervical region. And so we'll talk about that. And again, two um, products that I've created just again, to give you more tools. All right. So here we go. I'm just going to minimize my little video here. Okay. So when we think about the lymphatic system, we have to understand the connection between the lymphatic system and the circulatory system. So again, really high level overview, um, our heart pumps blood um, through arteries. That's really rich in oxygen through this whole arterial network in the body. And as that blood flows into the tissue space, it um, Um, meets what we call these capillaries. So capillaries are these smaller, what we call arterioles that then um, basically blood returns to the heart via the venous system. But in that tissue space, a lot of uh, fluid leaves the capillaries and that fluid, um, some of it returns back, but a lot of it stays in that tissue space. And that's what we call pre-lymph or interstitial fluid. So that fluid basically bathes our uh, cells with oxygen and nutrition. And a big part of it is it removes waste. And so that fluid, again, leaves the capillary space, it becomes lymph. And that lymph actually then in the extracellular matrix, it's doing all the things it needs to do. And then it drains into lymphatic capillaries and those become 
um, lymphatic, that lymphatic, lymphatic capillary system then makes its way to lymph nodes and lymph organs and lymph glands. And the whole role of the lymphatic system is really to um, detoxify the body and remove waste from cellular debris in the tissue space, but also for our immune system to engage um, whatever we're engaging with, whether it's a pathogen or a toxicant, and mount a, an immune response to keep our bodies healthy and not overwhelmed with a high uh, microbial burden. So our lymphatic system, when you treat chronic illness, a lot of what you're talking about is how to detoxify the body and how to improve our immune health. And so the lymphatic system is this intersection of doing um, both of these things. So that's why it's so important. All right, so this is just a little bit of a um, more granular picture of everything I just said. So this is really where a lot of the action is happening with our blood um, flow um, changing in the capillary space. And then these green, you know, the green is always the picture of the lymphatic system in the textbooks. And so um, again, the lymph is draining into these lymphatic capillaries where they um, then move upstream through valves, nodes, ducts, and so forth. And a big part um, that differentiates the lymphatic system from the circulatory system is that the circulatory uh, system has the heart um, that's pumping the blood, um, also has just fluid dynamics that are creating more blood flow through the arterial system. However, the, vein, uh, the lymphatic system does not have a pump. And so it has these one-way valves that um, push fluid back um, to the heart, um, and it basically the lymph collects into the thoracic duct on the left side, and then a lot of the lymph drains into the um, venous system there. But again, we have to, a lot of my strategies today are going to be how do we pump that fluid because we, it doesn't have its own internal pumping system. Okay, so I always love talking about this topic here. So this is really the marriage of what we, everything we just talked about. But when we talk about the lymphatics, we have to um, talk about the extracellular matrix. And people who are trained in naturopathic medicine, as well as biological medicine, really focus on the space because this is where a lot of the action is happening. So the extracellular matrix is this um, space between the cells, and it's made up of structural proteins like collagen. Collagen is the most abundant protein in our body. It's also made up of um, fibroblasts, which actually create stem cells and immune cells like mast cells we talked about in our last part one version. And uh, there is um, a lot of conversations within the chronic illness community around mast cell activation and people who are highly sensitive and um, have mast cell issues. And mast cells are really, um, their job is to survey the extracellular matrix and to you know, uh, uh, respond appropriately when needed. However, we're finding that mast cells are more highly triggered and more irritable and more releasing not only histamine, but all of the other inflammatory um, components that they do. Um, because my, in my opinion, it's because what's happening in the extracellular matrix these days is that it's becoming overwhelmed and overburdened and quite toxic. And so again, um, just to bring us back to this visual, this is the capillary bringing, um, you know, oxygen rich blood to the place. Um, again, uh, fluid is leaving the space and becoming interstitial fluid or pre-lymph. And again, bathing um, this fluid space with oxygen and nutrition, but removing waste, right? So if this um, space isn't draining into, as you see, the fluid flow, so it's, um, this fluid has to make its way um, into the lymphatic vessel, and then you know the body um, detoxifies and the immune system mounts a response to anything it needs to do. But if the lymphatic system is congested and overwhelmed, then just because of fluid dynamics, this space is going to get stagnant and congested. And then cells can't remove um, their own cellular debris in the space. And then that's going to, the intercellular environment is going to become um, congested and toxic as well. And so a big part of our goal is whatever condition you have is to drain the space, right? Get the space, the fluid to move nicely and do its job and move waste and keep moving. And this is the site of action for a lot of the things people come to see me for. So Lyme disease. So uh, Borrelia loves to degrade and eat collagen and elastin. So that's going to create more inflammation in the space. Um, people who have 
um, viruses or parasites, can this can be a site of action for this space. Um, toxicants like heavy metals, because of their charge, they can um, you know, attach to some of these structural proteins and create um, inflammation as well as um, you know, break down communication within the space. Uh, glyphosate, the most active in, or the active ingredient in Roundup is a glycine analog and can be incorporated in in our collagen because it mimics glycine, one of the key amino acids in the collagen matrix. So if you have any of the things I just said, they're most likely affecting your extracellular matrix and you need your lymphatic system to be draining properly to keep this, um, this you know, toxicity in, these, um, in your immune system mounting a healthy response so that you don't become sick. Or um, if you do have a chronic illness that you can really um, allow your body to work and how it naturally does and clear the space well. And so I'm gonna re read a quote because I love quotes. And um, Dr. Rob Cass, my good friend who owns Physica, he's a, he's a brilliant homeopath and a formulator. And, he um, studied biological medicine. And so he said, the extracellular matrix regulates the cellular milieu, so the inside environment of the cell. And since the lymphatics are highly intermeshed with the extracellular matrix, we can change the terrain by lymphatic therapies. So biological medicine is all about changing the terrain. Having a healthy terrain allows us to be resilient to whatever um, comes our way in life. And so really we can change um, the environment of the inside the cell, which is where our DNA is expressed, where energy is produced, where our mitochondria, you know, do all the work that they do, we can change the environment inside the cell by lymphatic work. So I don't know if I should pause for a moment there, but that is what I wanted to say about overview of the lymphatic system and the interconnection with the extracellular matrix. Even just the term like extracellular matrix, like like I think we all kind of get what a matrix is and extracellular like just having you explain it to me is very very helpful because it's a concept most of us didn't grow up with mm -hmm. okay we maybe we are familiar vaguely with like a central nervous system or the connection between the nerves and the spine because we went to a chiropractor and they told us about it I think that this is the you know the future that the conversations that we're going to be having hopefully more and more um, with educating our practitioners as well is going to be about things like this. And what I love to do is to have practitioners teach the community how to think. So you mm. take this information and knowledge and you turn it into thinking. So you take the learning and you turn it into thinking. So that's mm. why this is so beautiful. So thank you for this. Keep going. You're doing great. <laughs> I'm talking slow. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing great. You're doing great. Um, one thing I wanted to mention before, excuse me, as I re-interrupt you, is that in the chat is the link for Dr. Schaffner's course. Use the code Siobhan, which is my name, S-H-I-V-A-N, in order to get it for only $47, you guys. It's $97. It's crazy usually, but it's now $47 just for a couple of days. So I just wanted to mention that to you. It's seven days. It's seven, seven times seven is 49. I mean, it's less than $7 a day. It's bonkers. Anyway, keep going. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So good. So good. Thank you. Um, so again, thinking about the lymphatic system and how it impacts our health, um, I wanted to just bring another idea into, um, you know, our conversation today is when I think about, I see a lot of complex chronic illness patients, right? So people who've tried a lot of things, seen a lot of doctors and you know, it's affecting a lot of systems and they're really outside the conventional paradigm of medicine, right? Because conventional medicine really wants to just say one thing is wrong with them, give them a pill or a couple of treatments and then move on, right? And why it's complex is because all of these systems are seemingly affected. But um, when we think about principles and how the body works, we want to um, just, again, when you see a complex patient, you might not know everything to do with them at first, but we have these basic principles and knowing that really health is how free, um, freely our body is flu um, flowing. So I always like to say health is flow and uh, German physician Mesmer back in the 1700s was even saying health is the free flow of the processes of life through thousands of channels in our body, diseases caused by obstacles to this flow. So bringing this to present day, I believe that if our lymphatic system is congested and not draining as efficiently as proper as it's designed to do, that can be an obstacle to our health and that can create disease over time. And one of the things I just want to 
always remind people as we move the lymph, as we drain the body, and we can, uh, again, mobilize toxicants, biotoxins, mycotoxins. So it's really important to also support the other organs of elimination. Um, those include the liver and the gallbladder system, the colon, the kidneys, the lungs, the skin, um, these all work together. And if one um, of these organs is not working optimally, it can put stress on uh, the other organs. So we want the whole system to be eliminating as efficiently as possible. And that will support the lymphatic system's efforts as well. And one key part of all of my protocols is not only to get the lymph moving, but also to make sure that people are taking what we call binders. And binders are things like chlorella, zeolites, fulvic and hemic acids, modified citrus pectin, clays, charcoals, and they bind to whatever's coming out um, of our bile um, that's coming out of the gallbladder. So the liver produces bile, bile um, makes its way to the gallbladder. Even if you don't have a gallbladder, the, um, you still make bile and your body um, actually will uh, make its own little gallbladder. I, my cadaver in naturopathic medical school had their, um, her gallbladder removed and um, it actually, she made her own, it, um, one of the bile ducts actually dilated. So it looked like her body actually created a, a pouch or pocket to store bile. So bile is even more important. Bile flow is even more important if you don't have a gallbladder. So again, this um, the liver is basically eliminating waste, normal metabolic waste and toxicants like mycotoxins, metals, um, hormones, um, and that is being eliminated through um, the bile system and binders help to bind those, everything I just said, within the intestinal tract so that it can be properly eliminated through the stool instead of recirculated. So if you feel like once you get your system moving that you're feeling like you know, nauseous or headachey or, you know, these symptoms, binders are a great strat strategy um, to minimize any of those potentially healing crises or detox reactions that sometimes we see when we get um, stagnation moving in the body. Can I just ask um, a, quick, a quick question about that? Let's say you go and you have a massage, right? Has anyone here ever felt funny the next day? You feel like you didn't drink enough water. You've got the sore throat slightly. Something feels just a little like swollen after a massage, a good massage. And um, that's, is, is that accurate to say that that's what that feeling is, is like those toxins being free, would that be something where a good idea to take some binders then, or maybe even before? It's a great question. And yeah, exactly. So the one massage is getting your fascia and your lymphatics moving. And um, some of my patients will pre-treat any lymphatic work or treatments they do uh, with binders before and with binders after. And I find that that can be a really great tool and strategy to minimize any of those side effects. Since we're talking about this too, if you have a congested lymphatic system and you are struggling with a chronic illness, remember the lymph is where a lot of pathogens can congregate and overwhelm the immune system. So some people, if you've had like um, persistent Lyme disease or chronic viral load, you get your lymph moving, sometimes you can have a short bout of feeling more flu-like in the beginning. That's a sign that you actually need this work very much, not to back down, but to maybe back down the, um, the force of intervention that you're using, but really and surround it not only with binders, but other immune therapies. And then you navigate that really well. But I just want people to know these are going to potentials does not happen for the majority of people, but they can happen. And so I just want to make sure that you're not discouraged, but also feeling empowered if that does come up. Um, so we're getting into the actually three um, solutions for your lymphatic system. So my first slide is around creating flow in the body, right? So we wanna um, create lymphatic flow. Um, and again, we wanna create lymphatic flow towards the heart because the heart is right above the heart is the thoracic duct where all of this lymph from all over our body is making its way to this um, area. So then that uh, lymph fluid can return to the blood and uh, return to do the whole cycle that we just described. And again, the lymphatic system, uh, the valves just go one way. So movement really helps to move the lymphatics. Um, movement helps to move our fascia, it helps to move our lymph and get the fluids in the body moving. And then a lot of my patients have rebounding. So actually bouncing upwards closes the valves and moving downwards opens. So you're creating this pumping and by um, going up and down, you're actually creating this valve movement of opening and closing valves. Um, vibration plates are other things that you can do at home. Dry skin brushing is another really old-timey naturopathic tool um, to help support this. 
um, structured water. Um, this is something we got in the rabbit hole of last time. And we do talk about it at the course. I have Gina Bria going over a whole module about water and she's brilliant. She works closely with Dr. Jerry Pollack and there's something called the fourth phase of water also called structured water, exclusion zone water. And this is a type of water that we have in the body that does a lot of uh, work for us. And so it's not, water is H2O, this is H3O2. And it um, H3O2 actually can hold energy and it can exclude toxins and it can get our system moving. So it can actually increase blood flow. It can increase lymphatic flow. Um, exclusion water, uh, exclusion zone water is actually um, carried and transported in the fascia, you know, so the fascia is also called the water irrigation system in the body. And Gina Bria, um, she has a organization called hydrationfoundation.org. If you want to go down this rabbit hole, she's a free site, lots of recipes. Um, so she talks about ingesting uh, structured water or exclusion zone water through not only sophisticated water, um, you know, devices and things like that, but also eating certain foods that are high and naturally high in exclusion zone water, like chia seeds and cold breast um, green juices and um, things like that. So she has a lot of resources and then she does a whole module on you're gonna spend the day going down the rabbit hole of water that we, we like to do, but structured water can get um, our lymph moving. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Before we move on, just Marcy is a lymphatic massage therapist. So it's so great to have you here, Marcy. She's just sort of arriving at the party. And so she's like, what about lymphatic massage? And of course, of course, that's part of it. And then yep. you can do yourself as well. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we're creating flow with all of these ideas. And then I wrote down flow presso, which our friend Kelly Kennedy um, introduced me to. And this was a system that I have in my office. And it's created by a woman, Desiree, um, who's in uh, New Zealand, Desiree Desponge. And it's compression. So this idea of compression infrared, which actually is not only heating the body, but also increasing exclusion zone water in the body. And then um, not technically PEMF, but kind of like um, PEMF, but a frequency um, application to also increase cellular voltage in the body. So that's just one of many tools out there. And then yes, I have a wonderful um, massage therapist, Eva Christensen, who works with me and she does a wonderful manual lymphatic work. And so again, depending on where you are, right? In your health journey. So a lot of my patients have been sick for a long time. So we need more hands-on work. We need the flow press. So we need Eva, you know, we need great hands to get the lymph moving. And then, but we, we get that started. And then a lot of my patients, I encourage them to have home tools, whether it's just dry skin brushing and walking around the block, that's fine. Or, you know, getting a rebounder or a vibration plate or so forth. But um, this is definitely, I wish it was a lifestyle um, practice for everybody. Um, find what works for you and what you'll do. Um, but flow is the, the name of the game here. So that's solution one. See, the, the slide had more than one thing. <laughs> we, we could stop there. But yeah. Um, but now, you know, the other thing that we all have access to is our breath, right? And so breathing um, actually pumps our limb. And so in modern day, we're all running around, we're all stressed out, we're not breathing. And really, you know, practices of yoga and meditation really um, implement breath work, right? And so breath work is a way for us to um, get grounded get centered in our bodies, um, engage our parasympathetic nervous system. And when we focus on our breath, when we inhale, so there's a picture here. So when we're inhaling, our chest expands and our diaphragm lowers. And our diaphragm, when it lowers, it's actually massaging our um, abdominal organs, which is really wonderful for the lymph. And then when it expands, it's also um, the thoracic duct actually opens up and the lymph goes into the, uh, the, the venous system. So, you know, we have that inhalation and then when we exhale, the cisterna chile, which is in the abdominal, like the center of the abdomen, essentially, and that's where a lot of the lymph is making its way from the lower extremities and the abdomen, and it's pulling there. And then the cisterna chile dumps into the thoracic duct. Again, the thoracic duct is going to be the big um, highway to return the um, lymph to the heart. And so when we exhale, we contract our rib cage, and then that cisterna chile opens and because the diaphragm goes up. And then that lymph um, enters the thoracic duct. So by 
um, inhalation and exhalation, we're pumping our lymphatic system. Um, so again, um, I think the world would be a happier place if we all took a few moments every day to breathe. So you could pair some type of movement and then even like five minutes a day, just really, you can make this really complicated or really simple, but just having an awareness of having deeper inhalations and exhalations and that actually helps your lymphatics. Um, and then when I thought, thought about three, I also, again, from my lens, I want to remove, um, you know, remove what we know is clogging up the extracellular matrix and the lymphatics. So why I really enjoy talking about this is because this is kind of the site of action of where my medicine works. And it's really, um, I believe the extracellular matrix and the lymphatics is really the intersection of toxicants, pathogens, and trauma too. And so we want to really, um, you know, uh, see what we can avoid within our own lives, whether that's, you know, through personal care products, through, um, you know, foods, through avoiding heavy metal exposure, avoiding pesticide and herbicide exposure. If you have an exposure to that, unfortunately, we're all on the planet and we all do, um, you know, knowing that that's something that we need to address so we can really free up uh, the space. Um, so toxicants, um, so again, being aware of this. Um, pathogens, so understanding that pathogens can have their side of action here. Um, and so this is the area of Lyme and co-infections, viruses, uh, parasites, even I didn't write here, but some yeast and mycotoxins can be in the space. And then trauma. So um, there's um, a man by the name of Dr. James Oshman, and he wrote a book called Energy Medicine, which is an awesome book. And he coined the term living matrix. And um, it's really that, you know, we think of the body compartments a lot of the times, but we're basically all interconnected from our skin and really the fields or in the energy field around our skin to our skin, to what we call the interstitium, to the collagen matrix and the fascia, um, to that actually crosses over the cell membrane and into inside the cell to our nucleus and our DNA that we can really um, create a lot of, or it, we're a highly interconnected network um, of, you know, through our fascia and our collagen and our microtubulin and all of these things. And so he studied this and he's saying, okay, this is the, you know, this is not only um, a really unique idea, but this is the realm that energy medicine works. And I showed you that picture with collagen um, in the extracellular matrix. And I told you a little bit about structured water. So we have structured water inside our cells that helps to maintain the negative voltage and helps to detoxify the cell. And then we have structured water that organizes um, not only in the fascia, but around the collagen. And he has the idea that you know, this water actually can hold information such as memory. And so when people have a traumatic event or, you know, been through, you know, a surgical procedure or so forth, um, our body, like our conscious mind could be, you know, dealing with this in another way, but our body actually can be holding memory or thoughts or emotions in our tissues. And so you may have had an experience where you've had a massage or craniosacral or some type of body work. And, you know, you just have this somatic release where you don't know where it's coming from. You have a thought and emotion, you're crying. And he has a language of a really, um, making sense of all that. And I think he has a, he's really close to, you know, we observe all this stuff in clinical practice and then we're like, how does this work? Or how does, you know, we try to make sense of it, you know, but I feel like his model and his framework. So um, I just write the living matrix is the physical substrate where traumatic memories are stored and resolved. So this space of the matrix, we wanna make sure it's, um, you know, detoxifying from the toxicants. Um, we have immune therapies and support for pathogens. And then we, we know that this could be an area, one of our blocks, just like glyphosates in our college and, you know, a traumatic, you know, memory could be um, in our body as well. So those are my three solutions. So we want to create movement, we want to breathe, and then we want to avoid or remove um, things that congest our lymphatic system. So um, those are things I'm hoping that you can take home and, you know, start noodling and implementing today. Um, and again, we created this seven day lymphatic rehab blueprint. I know that Siobhan did an awesome, her summons are always amazing. And she did an awesome job really educating all of you on the power of the lymphatic system. And so this is really a tangible take home, like let's, let's get this into your life. Um, and so day one, I go more deeply into understanding your lymphatic system. Day two, we go more deeply into what could be clogging your lymph. We have some experiences in this um, in the seven day blueprint as well. So we have day three, improving lymphatic drainage with lymphatic massage. So self techniques that you can do. Um, day four, we talked about, we have water in your lymphatic system. So that's Gina Bria. 
Um, day five is my dear friend, Katie Strakosh. Um, she walks us through yoga and breath work um, for the lymphatic system. We talk about the lymphatic system and sleep, which I'm gonna to touch on some more um, after um, a few slides. And then we talk also about the lymphatics of the abdomen. So that's often overlooked the, looked the whole lymphatic network in the abdomen, as well as our breasts and our breasts are lymphatic tissue. So, um, you know, looking at all of that. So that's what we packed into seven days. Um, and um, I'm sure Siobhan will have more information as well. well. I actually wanted to show kind of, can, do you mind oh. stop sharing your screen? So let me do that for a sec. I'm going to switch. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to stop share. Perfect. I know, I know there's a lot. So I'm going to go back to her, to Dr. Schaffner's screen a second, but I wanted to share my screen for a second and take you into the course. That, I, that's not what I see. Do you see the course? There it is. Can yeah. you guys see it now? Okay. I can see it. Perfect. If you, if you all see everything else that's on my screen, I apologize. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> It's insanity, but here, go to course portal. I hope this works. I think it should, there it is. Okay, so this is first of all, beautiful, by the way, whoever's your designer, lovely. Um, so, she does a great job. Uh, yeah, she does a great job. So there's the lymphatic rehab blueprint workbook. And then just on day one, this is, you know, I'm just gonna literally click it. I'm not sure you can hear, but you can Okay, so answer. diving into our favorite topic in the lymphatic system so much. I'm okay. certainly that is interesting the whole tonsil business i know i was gonna say you know that world yeah <laughs> the whole tonsil connection like that is, i i think the tonsil is, is even more ignored than the appendix oh yeah yeah certain yeah. immune cells and connection the toilet of the brain come on you guys who doesn't want to take a course that talks about the toilet of a brain <laughs> so here's the beginner's guide to dry brushing from eva i bring to you today skin brushing for the absolute beginner so first you know and also getting in a comfortable position and yes that does matter because that is the way that the digestion works so I just wanted to show you that so you can I'm going to literally go to day three just take you through this because I know you know oh our Kelly Kennedy yeah yeah She's always fun. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant, inspiring, energetic. You know, my my goal today is at hand. I don't know why. It just seems awkward to do this. So she teaches you some very essential information about how to maximize your lymphatic drainage. Um, day four, and you can poke around. It's just, you don't have to go with the day order, okay? Like, if you're like, I want to know about structured water. Sure. Mm. That's the that's the fascia. Imagine that's the, you laugh. When I said, the fascia is the water irrigation network. This is what she goes into all that. Yeah, you guys, I literally want to do a fascia summit because oh, yeah. I'm so fascinated by it. Right? Would that be great? Would that right? <laughs> well, it's like that doing lymph too. Like as a second lymphatic summit, do the fascia. You know, exactly. It'd be a great follow-up so yoga breath work i'll go faster so we can get back to dr schaffner um the glymphatic system and sleep which we're going to talk about and then um the lymphatic system of the ab abdomen and the breast men can get breast cancer too i'm just saying yeah. so and then you have the course workbook so i'll stop sharing i'm going to ask clarissa from my team who's already done this to put the link in the chat so you all can click on that if you want to um and you can get it down to $47 um, when you use the code Siobhan, and it's just for a couple of days. Okay, you like the idea of a fashion summit. Well, I see, it's, like, oh, it's in the field. <laughs> it's in the field because I, I studied, um, if anyone watched, um, I'll two, fat, two seconds, if anybody watched the session with, um, I can see her, the melt method, 
Oh, oh my God. I know who you're talking about. Um, yeah, she was in the summit. She's beautiful. Sue Hitzman, um, yeah. where you're doing the soft foam rollers and these soft balls that are blue. Yeah. I got certified like through the yin yang. I went to all these classes. I traveled all over the country to go study with her. And I ended up not teaching it because just a variety of life, life things got in the way. But she's the one who, I mean, I've been robbed a million times and all this, and I know about fascia, but she's the one who really showed me how we can manipulate it ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I've been fascinated with it. And she was one of the first people I thought of when I was going to do a lymphatic summit. I'm like, I've got to get her on. And thank goodness she, uh, yes, Sue Hitzman, she's great. And Gil H., yes, Tom Myers, exactly, Wendy, thank you. Her course is fantastic. Um, oh, good. Do use the coupon code Siobhan um, for this course, but also Sue Hitzman's, if you want to learn about melt method is fantastic. Um, anyway, so, all right. You know what? I think I'm going to send out a survey. You should do a fascia summit because I, I do think, you know, like the lymph and then the fascia kind of takes it to this whole other level because, um, again, you know, our collagen is the most abundant protein in the body. And I'm noodling over, um, you know, again, how you unlock the lymph also from the fascial aim angle too. So it's all interconnected. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. So I would, I would be doing like fascia and long-term illness, short-term acute, as well as, um, you could get into the bioenergetics too, because it's light conductive. It's, um, you know, it's the, where frequency medicine works. You could talk about exclusions on water, but we're just having a little, this is Siobhan and I do this. We, we just figure out our next summit. <laughs> we brainstorm together. Okay. <laughs> Your your additional slides okay but thanks everybody yeah that's really funny um okay so here we go and okay so check out the course and then we're going to just talk a little bit about the glymphatic system so i see a lot of patients with a neurological illness and so the glymphatic system is newly discovered it was only discovered in about 2015 and when i learned about it i'm like everybody should know about the lymphatic system because whether you want to prevent cognitive decline, any neurological issue, or if you want to recover from one, this system needs to be working. So the lymphatic system is the glial dependent lymphatic system. So it is the lymphatic system in the brain. It's how our brains detoxify naturally when we sleep. And so what happens is when we sleep, blood flows into our brain and this lymph um, flows along the arteries And then these um, glial cells called astrocytes have these end feet. Uh, They're like these star-like neurons here. And they have these um, end feet, they're they're glial cells, the astrocytes are glial cells, that's why it's glymphatic system. And so these little aquaporin channels regulate the flow of water as they open and close. And as they regulate the flow of water and lymph that um, flows into the space, it brings nutrition to the neurons and removes waste. And then the uh, waste gets removed at, at, you know, along the lymphatic system and out of the brain via the veins, alongside the veins. So what happens, unfortunately, when people have had traumatic brain injuries or concussions, the lymphatic system is anatomically disrupted and it doesn't work as well. And so then what we see is a buildup of waste um, in the brain, and that can lead to a neuronal cell death, which then leads to cognitive decline or a decrease in neurological function. So they know when you don't get a good night's sleep that you actually have a buildup of amyloid beta in your brain. And amyloid beta is related. There's a, it's a hallmark sign of um, Alzheimer's. Um, and so, you know, so this is a really important system. So when we think about this, um, I've been just, you know, really focused on, you gotta sleep, right? You know, let, let's get you to bed so that your brain shrinks and that lymph can flow through your brain that you can have a healthy brain and recover from an illness. And, you know, because of the work that we're doing with sleep right now, I've been learning more about the different phases of sleep and ha- what our brain does in the different phases of sleep and then what types of sleep we need in order to have a more active lymphatic system or lymphatic system in the brain. So again, for those of you who might not know this, we have non-rapid eye movement sleep and then we have REM sleep. So sleep is divided into four phases and then our brain waves go from light sleep and then it goes a little bit deeper in N2. And then we spend a lot of time in what we call deeper delta wave sleep. And that's when you read about deeper delta wave sleep, that's when a lot is happening in the brain. 
I think I have a slide on that. I'll go in more depth. And then rapid eye movement happens. Um, that's um, where we primarily do the most of our dreaming. We can dream in other phases, but this is um, a time when the body's really active um, and the brain is really um, moving a lot of blood and lymph. Um, and, but this is when we're, we're sleeping. And so unfortunately, if you have insomnia or a chronic condition or a sleep issue, you don't get those lo longer um, bouts of Delta sleep or REM sleep. There are more sleep trackers on the market that people can actually, without doing a sleep study, actually um, you know, measure your sleep and see if you are deficient in those areas. So um, I just talk about deep and REM sleep because the lymphatic system is associated with working more efficiently during these times. So deep sleep is associated with the slowest brain waves of sleep. It's known as delta wave sleep. Um, and what happens during this phase of sleep is there's a lot of glucose metabolism in the brain, um, which is gonna be really good for memory and learning. Um, the pituitary is really um, important during this time to help optimize hormones and also growth hormone. Um, we actually are in a pair, more of a parasympathetic state um, in our brain during this time. Um, and then um, this is just kind of a, a, a Quote about how this is really this is what's happening right now is more lymphatic activity during this time, and then I mentioned um, as well that REM sleep is when there's more um, blood volume, so more blood going to the brain. So that um, is also increase in cerebral spinal fluid. Um, so then there's more lymphatic activity. So the activity of the lymphatic system is increased while dreaming, um, and therefore the removal of um, metabolic waste and toxicants um, get detox from the brain during this time. So when we were talking about this, Siobhan asked me to share um, the product that we created because um, a lot of patients have issues with sleep. And so we've been using liposomal melatonin, which is an awesome product I still use. But the GABA is really critical to help improve deep sleep and REM sleep. And we are not just using an oral GABA because that can be poorly absorbed, but through the brilliance of Dr. Ruggiero, we used GABA um, and microbial um, derived chondroitin sulfate. That's it's vegan, um, and so the GABA with the chondroitin sulfate actually helps it get into the extracellular matrix, into the lymphatics, into the brain more easily. So it's a transdermal application. You put a little bit on your temples and a little bit behind your ears. And what we're seeing is um, Marco did a study um, with a few uh, people and with a sleep tracking device. And with the application of Somnium, we saw deep sleep go up and REM sleep go up. So this is really exciting for us. So again, um, before and after, pretty remarkable um, change. Um, and score. Huge. That I know. is huge. I know it's like not a question even, you know, and again, we need to, of course, do more studies and get more feedback, but it's been really amazing um, what we've seen initially. Um, so the transdermal GABA insomnia is going to help to also, GABA helps to um, also decrease noradrenaline. And, you know, when we're, um, you know, sleeping and when we want to get into um, REM sleep, this is a time when our brains are completely devoid of noradrenaline. And, you know, when you have, again, modern life, a lot of stress, a lot of, you know, trauma in your life, um, it's kind of this vicious cycle, like you're, you know, you're more sensitized and you have more noradrenaline in your brain, but you need the sleep to reset all of that and to heal the limbic system and heal the brain, but you're, you almost can't get into that state because of the the um, neurotransmitters that are too high. So the GABA helps to balance that, take that down so you can actually get into this dream sleep. Um, and so again, um, this is gonna be supportive, you know, from our court, you know, for our purposes of our lecture today, it's gonna really support the glymphatic system. And, you know, I'm all, you know, I'm going down the rabbit hole with sleep in my own personal um, exploration in my practice and learning from more sleep experts on, you know, what's happening during sleep and, um, you know, just also what happens when we dream and, you know, all of these different aspects. And so it, it really is important for our body to heal and reset and, you know, to have um, a long, healthy life. And I think Americans are getting there to value sleep a little bit more, but, you know, the, the more we look at it, the more we need it. And then when we think about, again, the lymphatics in relationship to the rest of the lymphatic system, we want to make sure the lymph can have somewhere to go. So the lymph that is exiting the brain um, drains um, along the cervical lymph nodes. I got 
I got this. All right. So um, when we think about, you know, the lymphatics, and I'm sure everyone um, learned through this summit that, you know, the lymphatic system is highly interconnected. So we want the lymph downstream to be moving and not congested to support the lymphatics draining out of the brain and through the lymphatic channels. In the course, I also talk about the tonsils and the sinuses and how that's really important too for lymphatic drainage. Um, but again, we wanna um, open up the lymph in the neck um, so that the lymphatic system uh, can drain properly. So um, I created a blend called Lymphogym and it is an oil infusion of different herbs that you, it's just like a little roller that you can roll on uh, the cervical lymph nodes. You can put it on other areas of lymphatic stagnation as well. And has some of my favorite herbs um, in this um, oil-based red root, calendula, nettles, clo uh, cleavers, red clover, um, and a green tea extract. And then it has a combination of essential oils, frankincense, geranium, and heliochrysum. So that's just another tool um, Siobhan asked me to share. And again, we have, um, you know, we want to support uh, Siobhan's community, and I'm so grateful to be able to talk to all of you. So um, again, you have a code for the uh, seven-day um, lymphatic rehab blueprint, and then if you're curious um, and want to explore these products, we extended, um, I know it says June 4th, but we extended it to June 6th, I believe, um, just because we did this part too, so more people could watch um, the webinar. So I'm sure... The links will be provided. And then while we're waiting for Siobhan, um, we have a few moments here. So I'm happy to answer some questions. Um, and thank you all who have been hanging in there and listening to the, the whole webinar. I hope it's been helpful. So um, LT is asking, are there any diagnostic tests and tools used to diagnose or that can point to stagnation of the lymph and stagnation of the liver? What tests can I request my physician to do or look at? Good question. So the most um, easily accessible tests are going to be uh, through basic blood work. And through basic blood work, you can have someone order what we call a comprehensive metabolic panel. And that's going to give us a window into your liver. So an AST and an ALT are going to be enzymes that could be elevated if there's a lot of uh, hepatocyte injury or liver um, you know, congestion. There's also, we look at bilirubin, which is a marker of bile uh, flow. So if that's high or low, that can give us information around bile. There's also um, GGT that you can request. Um, and if that's above 25, um, we can think about there's a high toxic burden that the liver is um, struggling with. So those are just like basic uh, blood work, um, you know, tests that you can take a look at. Um, lymphatic uh, biomarkers are not as easy to um, find. I know that a lot of Siobhan's passion for this topic came out of her mother having lymphoma. And I do a LDH screening on most patients. And LDH is uh, lactate dehydrogenase, and it can be a screening um, marker that's easy to run um, for lymphoma. So again, it, it can be elevated for other reasons. But again, we want to... Um, you know, make sure that if that is elevated, everything is being checked out appropriately. Um, and then with lymphatic stagnation, there's a lot of signs and symptoms that could be related to lymphatic stagnation. Um, and that can be also diagnostically or therapeutically challenged of like, how do you feel better when you get your lymph moving? Okay, so anonymous attending, what happens to the lymphatic fluid movement when the vessels are in areas where the muscles having um, spasms or are tight causing pain, pain like the pelvic bowl? For example, like in pelvic floor dysfunction, like in levator ani syndrome, could the spasms be related to lymphatic congestion in the pelvic bowl? Will lymphatic drainage help? Good question. It could be the chicken or the egg in the sense of, you know, I don't know if lymphatic congestion necessarily creates the cramping. It could be multifactorial, but we know that lymphatic stagnation is probably happening when there is um, spasming in the body because of tensity in the tissues um, and not as much movement in the tissues at the, during those times. So um, again, for, you know, spasms, we want to, you know, look at nutritional substance, um, nutritional supplementation. Um, a lot of fascia and lymphatic therapies could help also resolve these um, things. Um, and then levator ani syndrome, there could also be um, poor muscle tone in those um, muscles that are in the pelvic bowl. And there can be some hormone deficiencies um, like testosterone deficiency that might be um, needing to be explored. Um, 
Can breast lymphedema cause intermittent diffuse redness on breasts after breast cancer surgery? Yes, I would say yes. Um, you know, again, it's hard to say, Laura, with all the other factors, um, but I would say it's definitely a possibility and to work with your providers to um, see how they best can support you. Um, Pamela, what were the example binders again? Um, new to me and I'm not sure how to take. Um, so some of my favorite binders are twofold. One is from through a company called BioPure. Um, there's a chlorella vulgaris, which is a blue-green algae that we want to take away from food. And then there's also a zeolite powder called zeobind that we want to take away from food. Um, so those binders help to bind different toxicants and biotoxins. I really like a company called Cellcor, and they have fulvic and humic acid products um, that are really wonderful at um, binding up uh, pesticides and metals and biotoxins. Those are nice because they can be taken with food, which kind of revolutionized um, binder taking. Um, and then um, and Margie asked the same question. Are there any binders that don't cause constipation? Yeah, so binders can cause constipation if people uh, tend to have um, air on constipation. So if you're taking binders and you're constipated, I definitely would want you to do magnesium and make sure that you're doing either magnesium oxide or citrate, um, castor oil packs, um, those types of things. Um, you could, I, I find that the cell core binders are less constipating. Um, there's also some brown algaes that are a little bit weaker binders, but tend to be less constipating as well, like PC Aglonia cava, which is from BioMpure. Um, regarding rebounding, can jumping jacks have the same effect? Um, rebounding is going to be a little bit more, um, you know, like intense, but jumping jacks for sure. I mean, please, you know, do anything that's going to create movement and that gravity motion up and down could be very helpful. Um, so Gary is asking research trauma in the matrix versus trauma in the amygdala. I think it's both, you know, I think there's trauma stored in both. Um, I think that there is somatic memory of trauma and then there can be um, trauma that is affecting um, the amygdala and the limbic system and um, keeping people in those um, traumatic patterns. So um, again, how I mentioned how sleep is a big part of sleep is healing the limbic system because we actually don't have any noradrenaline flooding in our brain uh, during REM sleep and it's a big limbic reset. So it's um, part, I think it needs to be more part of trauma work is making sure people are um, getting those opportunities um, to discharge and um, reset their brain at night. What is the best time to do deep diaphragmatic breathing? And would you describe the steps with emphasis on exhale in relation to the, um, into the Kegel? Um, so Connie, um, you know, again, there's no best time, I would say, for deep diaphragmatic breathing. I think it would just really depend on your lifestyle and what works best for you. Um, Katie Straykosh in my course does a whole hour on breath work. Um, and then there's a lot of resources online, a lot of different types of breath work. I mean, I think it's really, um, you know, really finding um, what works for you um, and what's going to, you know, help you stay um, committed to this as well. Um, yes, exactly. Lymph and fascia. I'm beginning to suspect they are entangled in the ab lower abdomen after auto accident and severe seatbelt injury. Can you um, speak briefly to the stomach lymphatic dozen injury? Yeah, I think it's really important to think about that because, um, you know, there could be um, scar tissue potentially from the injury. And I'm sorry you went through that. Um, and that can affect the whole fascia. There could be fascial adhesions, trigger points. And then when you don't have, if, when your fascia is injured or restricted or there's scar tissue, there's not as much movement. And then it, it, there needs to be fluid and movement for things to flow better. And then the fascia here could be restricted and downstream lymphatics can be affected um, because of the living matrix and how everything's connected. So I would find a really great um, body worker. Um, a lot of lymphatic workers work on the abdomen, myofascial work. Also, there's a type of um, a massage called myon abdominal massage. It's more focused on female reproductive hormone balancing and fertility, but it, they are trained to really work on the lymphatics in the abdomen, and that could be um, something. Um, does the course address if you've had a tonsillectomy in relation to lymph movement and detoxification? Um, yeah, we go over, you know, um, that a little bit and tonsillectomies can create tonsil scars in the base of the throat and that can create more restriction in that lymphatic tissue. Um, um, uh, 
Um, Layla's asking, so it's amount of time. So what she's asking with the somnium, what was, you know, what were we looking at? And it was a sleep tracker, um, a Fitbit, I believe. And they measure time in that stage of sleep. Okay, um, Pamela, can you recommend types, brands of binders and how much? I think I mentioned that, but definitely binders are awesome to implement in whatever protocol you're doing. Um, can you tell the difference between venous congestion versus lymphatic congestion? Um, they're definitely intimately tied, right? If you have venous congestion, remember from some of the diagrams that I showed, you could have um, lymphatic um, congestion because the veins are um, not allowing for the, the movement of uh, fluid to flow as well. So I think that they are interconnected. Um, Jen, thank you. Um, and then you're asking about lipedema and EDS. Are there supplements? Thank you. Um, lipedema is when there is um, uh, lipid deposits within the connective tissue and fascia. I am not an expert in that, and I do not um, have a lot of um, specific insights or tools. I know my dear friend, Dr. Sarah Whitney in um, LA, she works at a clinic that specializes in lipedema. Um, it's called Roxbury Institute. They're in Beverly Hills. Um, so that could be something to think about. And then EDS, um, you know, the uh, EDS that are going to have, they're going to have more like laxity in their connective tissue, um, and they're going to be more um, susceptible um, to potentially having more con uh, lymphatic congestion. Um, I'm now in touch with the explant community as a lymphatic massage specialist and their health issues are um, for clogged to lymph is just awful. Hopefully we can bring more awareness to this procedure and its negative consequences. Have you any experience with case histories of explant recovery? Um, so I think Marcy's talking about when people get their breast implants, right? And breast Ill, um, implant illness, when they um, remove that, that people don't always heal as well because they're not addressing their lymphatics. Um, it's so hard, right? Because uh, a lot of women who get breast implant illness need to get their implants removed. They're a source of toxicity. But again, um, it's in, you know, really key lymphatic issue, tissue, right? And so really working with someone who can do um, either therapeutic breast massage or opening up the lymphatics around the breast, um, doing different topicals to help. Um, will we will we be able to get a discount on your products while doing the course? Um, we do have a um, discount for Siobhan's um, community, so we'll make that available. How do we register for the class? Um, Brenda, if you want to look in the chat, I think there's a lot of information there. Um, Jeannie, since the lymph drains from the brain down to the cervical spine, could that be causing inflammation and pain conditions? Because I've been diagnosed with uh, Chiari syndrome in the cervical spine and also stenosis. That could be really related. So um, that could, um, you know, again, um, if you have Chiari in cervical spine um, or stenosis, that could be impacting the lymphatic system. Um, so I'm sorry you're going through that and hopefully you have a good team of people who are helping you navigate that. That, that is solvable. It's just, I, I know that it, um, is more um, definitely complex. Uh, is activated charcoal also a type of binder? Uh, yes, it is. Um, could you scratch the surface on the rabbit hole regarding trauma connection and James Oshman's work? Thank you. Pat, um, if you look up his name, um, he has a paper on fascial memory um, just Google Dr. James Oshman and fascial memory, um, just for the purposes of time, I, I can't go more deeply, but that's a really great place to start. Um, could you put the heavy metals binder in here? Thanks. Um, chlorella is the binder for heavy metals. I also like Cellcore HMET. It's heavy metal environmental toxicant binder and it is fulvic and humic acid. Um, I also like modified citrus pectin for lead. Um, Chris Shea makes a intestinal um, metal detox. That's a um, silica with a thiol binder that helps to get mercury out of the gut. Um, so those are some things to think about. Does stagnant lymph um, or backup in the lymph system affect the thyroid? Yes, absolutely. This is a huge area of lymph drainage, a huge area of activity with the, um, the veins and the arteries and the the nerves and you know the thyroid um, being right here that could be <laughs> all good all good um a lot of confusion mercury's retrograde sorry for that i can tell oh. you're doing a great job so i, I well, knew i'm in good hands 
Well, yeah, no worries. No, I'm just glad you're okay. And we are, we got through a lot of questions. And so I think we're in a good spot, but um, yeah, what, um, you know, anything else you want me to cover, Siobhan? Um, did you cover adhesions at all? Did you, did you explain what adhesions were? We talked a little bit um, about um, a woman has had a question about when she um, was in an accident and what that did to the um, pelvic area and the fascia and the lymph and talked about adhesions from that perspective. But if you want to add anything, I think that would be awesome. Um, just that that happened to me and that I did go to a visceral manipulation therapist when the uh, years, decades after the seatbelt jammed into my um, stomach and this is a very long story fast. She put her hands underneath my stomach through her visceral manipulation technique and literally moved it. And my stomach gurgled for three days straight. And it was incredibly beautiful. Isn't it was just like my life changed. It was so great. Oh, that, yeah, it's amazing. There's so many amazing healing modalities out there. And so, I mean, I think that's a big, I know you like to empower your community like I do. And so it's like, whatever you're struggling with out there, there's always a solution and always a way you might just not have connected to that resource yet. And I would just encourage you to be um, determined and persistent and to trust that you will be led to the right people at the right time. But um, yeah, visceral manipulation, lymphatic drainage, craniosacral, these are all beautiful modalities to help, um, you structurally um and as well as emotionally and your lymphatic system as well so everybody <laughs> thank you so much dr schaffner if you would leave some love into the chat and then um i know clarissa will once again if you don't want to scroll up um uh, post the links dr schaffner i want to go back to sharing my screen as we wrap guys use code siobhan i'm so i feel so famous that i have a code with siobhan in it um yeah. and, and get a discount on the course get a discount on the special products that she highlighted i wanted to thank you so much for coming today this course is special and you know what i did have a question and i'm not sure you can answer it dr schaffner sure. how long do they have access to the course do you know um we usually give people lifetime access um you know, to the course. Yeah, so that's um, what I thought. Our lawyers say, don't say the word lifetime access. Okay. <laughs> I know. I'm like, you know, you're, right. we're not going to, once you get it, we want you to have it. We're not, we're not going to try to take it away from you. Don't worry. <laughs> so, um, I like to say long term unlimited access, but like at some point, like if the internet goes away, okay, I'm, I, I, I don't have access for you anymore. But I don't think that's going to happen. So, <laughs> so um, check it out. I, I am so selective and so uh, frankly picky about the material I share with my community that I, and I am so incredibly confident in this course, in Dr. Schaffner and in her products and, and the like that I'm thrilled to be able to share this with you all. So thank you for joining us. We have just an incredible opportunity here. It's 47 bucks right now. It's usually 97, which frankly is a steal and a half already. Um, so this, I wish my mother had had this course. Oh my gosh. Mm. Can you imagine? Share this with your family and friends, the information you learn here. Teach your kids how to do lymphatic drainage. I, I mean, you could transform so many people's lives. And I don't know if you talked about the um, varicose veins. Not, not today, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> My mom had varicose veins and I didn't realize that that could possibly be a sign of a lymphatic problem. And I don't know if my mom, you know, like what would she have done differently if she had known? That's, that's the question. That, that's one of the questions. So I salute you all for spending time with us and taking valuable time out of your day. We will be sending you a replay. We will be sending you a transcript that is a gift from us to you. Um, there is a real person that does that transcription. So it is not instant AI. Um, it is really like, real intelligence <laughs> so i like to say give us a week sometimes we do it we get it too soon or sometimes it takes a little bit longer depending on what's happening but that will be coming your way in the meanwhile we'll get the recording to you as soon as possible so with that uh any um last minute thoughts dr schaffner oh just lots of love and gratitude and thank you so much for having me here again and i'm available anytime for your community so just please oh. let me know how i can help and um, yeah, again, thank you all for whom joined us live and I hope everyone has a beautiful weekend and we'll just keep at it, right? Right, that's right. Um, and Dr. Schaffner, come join us in the Lymphatic Rescue 
Facebook group I just started. It is up today. (laughs) So everybody (laughs) come over there. We're going to talk lymphatics. We have a new group just for us lymphatic geeks. And Mm -hmm. Larissa just put it in the um, in the chat. It was actually an inspiration from um, the lymphatic summit to do the Facebook group. I kept toying with it because it is a lot of work, you guys. And it's also a lot of benefit for the communities. And I was like, oh, do I have this? Do I have the bandwidth? And then, <laughs> and then it became very apparent that it's going to be essential. So um, come join us there and, and type in the chat. Do you want me to do a, a fascia summit? Like, do you think enough people know what the you fascia are, is? You should do that. Yeah, maybe you're 2023 or 2022, end of 2022. So yeah, because in 20, so let, let, let end of the year 2021 is. Um, Dental Health Connection Summit. March 2021 is Liver Gallbladder Rescue yeah, Summit. Fascia will be perfect because then so, you know, people will be, their lymph will be moving, their liver and their gallbladders will be open, and then you can get to the fascia. <laughs> Sounds great. Okay, so the next two years are planned. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. And I'll create my fascia blueprint or whatever, you know, so for. Oh, for that'll be great. Time. Yeah, we'll perfect. talk about the glymphatic system. We already did talk a lot about the glymphatic system, Pat, in the in the summit. Yes, do fascia. Okay, yes, you guys are saying yes. Uh, all right, I, I am inspired. I'm inspired. So, and he's <laughs> fascia stuff. Yeah. All right, more later. We're gonna wrap. Thank you, Dr. Schaffner. Have a beautiful day. You too. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you all. Here. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. There is someone. I'm going to stop the recording. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Come join us in the Facebook group and uh, stay in touch. If you want to get a hold of me, it's info at SIBOSOS.com. I do have to admit my team screens those because it is inundated with emails. Um, If they can help you, they will. And if you want to join the course, Dr. Schaffner has her own customer service, which is excellent. So um, hugs and kisses, everyone.